Lesson 15.2a, Using Fractional Edge Lengths, Volume. Last year in 5th grade math, Lesson 11.10, we learned to find the volume of a rectangular prism. The volume is equal to the length times the width times the height. And the volume formula is V is equal to LWH. And the length, width, and height of a cube are all congruent. They're all equal. So for a cube, we can find the volume as V is equal to L cubed, L to the third power. Because we're doing, if it's a cube, then its length, width, and height are all the same. So we can just do length times length times length. That is L raised to the third power, or L cubed. This cube has an edge length of one inch and a volume of one cubic inch. If this is one inch and its width is one inch and its height is one inch, we have one times one times one, it's a one inch cube, one cubic inch. And we can see it's filled with smaller cubes. There are eight smaller cubes inside this one cubic inch cube. Each of the smaller cubes has an edge length of half inch. If this is one inch, then from here to here is a half inch. And the width would be, for one of these little cubes, from here to here would be a half inch. And its height would be from here to here, it would be a half inch. And if you see this, there's four on the top layer, so there must be four on the bottom layer. One of these little small cubes would be one of eight of this entire larger cube. And volume is equal to length times width times height. And the volume of the small cube would be half inch times half inch times half inch. It would be one eighth cubic inch volume. Or we could say one eighth inch cubed. Now here we have a cube that has an edge length of one unit. So we could say it's one inch, one foot, one yard, one meter, whatever. It's one unit. And it's got a volume of one cubic unit, whatever that unit is. And there are four smaller cubes on the edge of this large cube. That means the edge length of one small cube is one fourth unit because the edge of the large cube contains four small cubes. We saw that the formula for the volume of a cube with an edge length L would be V is equal to L cubed. If it's got one unit here, one unit here, and one unit here as length, width, and height, one times one times one, well, that's one. It's one cubic unit. The formula for the volume of a smaller cube, if we pulled this one out, okay, so here we pulled it out, it's right here, with an edge length of one fourth unit, if this is one unit, then this little piece from here to here would be one fourth unit. So it's one fourth of whatever that measure is for length and width and height. Since it's one fourth unit for this edge, and the volume of this little cube or any cube would be length cubed, we could do one fourth times one fourth times one fourth, and that would be one fourth times one fourth is one sixteenth, one sixteenth times one fourth would be one sixty fourth. This one little cube has a volume of one sixty fourth cubic units. That means there are sixty four of these little cubes inside of this larger cube. Now, if you look, We've got L to the third power for L cubed, for the length cubed. And I wrote 1 fourth to the third power, 1 fourth cubed, inside parentheses. Let me explain why. The length, width, and height of a cube are all the same. It's a cube. So we can do its edge length cubed. Because we had a one-fourth edge length on the smaller cube, we did one-fourth inside parentheses raised to the third power. And that gave us the one-fourth times one-fourth times one-fourth. We need parentheses around this entire fraction to show that the entire fraction is raised to the third power. Without the parentheses, only the numerator will be affected by the exponent, which means we would have a numerator of 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1, 
over 4, we'd still have 1 fourth. So it's very important if you want to show the entire fraction is being raised to the third power that we put it inside of parentheses so that we know the entire fraction is affected by that exponent. So let's go back to our small cube and our large cube. If one of these smaller cubes has a volume of 1 64th cubic unit, we found that out, and 8 of the smaller cubes are arranged into a medium-sized cube, we can find the volume of that medium-sized cube by multiplying those 8 small cubes by the 1 64th volume of the small one. We have 8 times 1 64th. We can write the 8 over 1 to make our multiplication easier. We do 8 times 1 is 8. 1 times 64 is 64. We simplify 8 64ths to 1 eighth cubic unit. We multiply the volume of the small cube by the number of cubes in the medium cube. And if you look at this, I don't know if you can imagine, if this is one medium one, then we would have another medium one, then we'd have another one back here and another one back here. So there would be four medium cubes on the top layer and four medium cubes on the bottom layer. That's eight medium cubes. It's one eighth cubic unit of this larger cube. So we have a large cube that has an edge length of one unit. We have a small cube that has an edge length of one fourth. We have a medium cube and its edge length is two of these small cubes as one fourth plus one fourth. We have a one fourth plus a one fourth. That makes one half unit for its edge length. So we can also find the volume of the medium sized cube by using the formula V is equal to edge length cubed. We add the edge length of the two smaller cubes to equal the edge length of one medium cube. We add the one fourth plus one fourth to equal one half. We know the edge length of the medium one is one half unit. So we do volume is equal to one half cubed. See how it's in parentheses? So the whole fraction is affected by this exponent. We have one half times one half times one half. Well, one half times one half is one fourth, and one fourth times one half is one eighth. We know that the medium cube has a volume of one eighth cubic units. We finished the first part of this lesson. We're going to move on to the second part, finding volume rectangular prism. So just be careful when you're using fractions with exponents. If the entire fraction is involved, then you want parentheses around it to show that it's all affected by that exponent. Okay? Have a really nice day, and please join me for the second part of the lesson. Bye.